do is you go be upstairs. Thanks, guys. Thanks, especially Coach D. Um, fellas, um, the first thing I want to say is I want to make this interactive. Okay? I'm not, I don't want to just lecture or, or speak to you. So if you have questions, please interrupt. Okay? I'd like some back and forth. If you have questions, suggestions, stuff you guys are doing with your players, please don't hesitate. Okay? Um, I want to start briefly just a little bit of the background. As Coach said, uh, we work here with, with him and the football team uh, and from time to time the boys uh, varsity basketball team here at Rochelle. A list of all the teams that we do work with around the area um, are up here. And that's just all of our team training. Uh, and then of course we have individuals uh, that come down to our gym. Uh, FAST has been around since 1999. Um, Coach Vinny is on his way. He'll be here shortly. Uh, I myself have been around for 23 years. This June actually be my 23rd year uh, coaching athletes since June of 92. Coach Vinny, 17 years. So we bring a lot of uh, experience, a lot of knowledge to you guys. Um, I will say this, we're going to teach you guys how to improve team speed. There's a very specific way to do it. I'll admit most of these 23 years we actually did it wrong until not that long ago. So if you guys are currently doing it wrong, that's okay. We did for a long time. Uh, we didn't get anybody hurt, we just didn't get them as strong or as fast as we probably could have. Uh, so we went out, researched a few years ago, we found new methodologies, new books, new people to talk to. This is the way that we're doing it now. Uh, I always like to say, incidentally, the stuff where we got this information from, which I'm going to cover in more detail in a second, with Westside Barbell in Columbus, Ohio, um, they work with Ohio State. They're in Columbus. All the Ohio State coaches, strength coaches go there. West Side guys go to Columbus. So uh, I think this stuff works. Okay. Um, I want to emphasize this is not fitness training. No offense to anybody if they're a personal trainer in here, but we don't do personal training. It's not fitness. It's not bodybuilding. Um, easiest example I can give you guys is I'm sure uh, when you're working with male athletes, um, one of the biggest questions are how much can you bench, and that's an important question. We'll get to that in a second. But the teenage boys like to think that it's chest day. It's chest day. The chest or the pecs have very little function in your sport. Blocking and tackling is not done with the chest as a wall done. Okay? So, for example, when we train our upper body, we're not training the chest so we have a better bench press training our bench press and the bench press muscles so your alignment can push better on the offensive and defensive line. And there's a very specific way to do that and, and we're going to cover that. Um, you got to have a plan, okay? A lot of times you guys don't have strength coaches and football coaches are filling in. I'm not a football coach. I cannot coach football. Um, it's kind of random or haphazard. You've got to have a plan. We use a 10-month plan template that we have. Uh, it's not set in stone, obviously, from team to team and even down to individual and player to player, position specific, it changes. But we start with a template. Uh, obviously, we use the 10 month plan because in season, our teams lift. We'll talk about that also. We lift in season, um, but it's a slightly different plan in season than it is off season. So it's a 10 month plan, obviously, for the two or three months that you guys are playing football. Um, so the point is that team speed, strength, and conditioning is not ready. Okay? You've got to have a plan in order, in order to be successful. Um, we're going to come at you from the philosophy that there's too much conditioning, not enough strength. This whole thing about getting football players lighter to get faster doesn't work. It doesn't work. The injury rates go up. At the end of the day, football, despite rule changes from the NFL down to high school, is still a contact or collision sport, as you guys know. We want our guys to be big and fast, strong and fast, not light and fast. I'll give you a couple examples. Can you guys come over here? <clears throat> See some of Coach D's players that we've had actually for how long? Five, okay, for a couple of years. Start Nasheem is. 10th grade, all right, 10th uh, grade, going into 11th, runs a 4, 8, 40. What was your last bench? 205, and how much you squat? 345, and how much you weigh? 345 pounds squat at 160 pounds, all right, what was your deadlift? 
315. So big numbers for 160 pounds. Uh, Jared going into 10th grade, right? Bailey going into 11th, weighs 260 pounds. What was your deadlift? About 375. And what was yours? Tyree's going into 10th grade, 400. So we're talking about big numbers, all right? And these numbers are only going to go up. They're only going to go up. 400 pound deadlifts, 345 pound box squats. We're talking about box squatting. The idea here is to get the athletes big. These guys are big and fast. I'm not trying to get them smaller to get faster. I'm not trying to over condition them to get faster. I'm trying to get them stronger, but stronger in the right muscle groups. Okay? So as an idea, when I say too much conditioning, not enough strength, how much have you run since football season ended? I haven't. I haven't run not once. But we're going to get there 40 times down. And I'll explain in our plan of where the conditioning comes from. It's too early in January if you're running your players. If you're running your players now, you don't actually play an important game until September. There's no need to run them into the ground in January. You need to get them strong. We have plenty of time, May through the start of camp in August, to do conditioning and to run them. And at their age, they're going to get into football shape extremely quick. But I could actually put these guys on the field now, and they'd be fine. If there was a game today or tomorrow, they'd be fine. And I'll explain how that's possible because of the tempo, the tempo that we use, 40 second rest intervals between sets. So the tempo is very fast. We're actually conditioning in the weight room, all right? They're going to demonstrate some stuff for us in a second. Thanks, guys. All right. Um, real quick, I want to start actually, there's a way not to train. Okay, and I was just saying too much conditioning. I'll give you an example. Uh, we had a kid come to us, ran a 5.040. 5 and we asked him, the father, what, he, what have you been doing? What's he been doing? He's been running, he's 11th going into 12th grade, he runs a 5-0. What have you been doing? Speed training, speed training, speed training. Running, running, running. But he hasn't been lifting in the correct fashion. He's been doing more of a bodybuilding type of workout, body parts. Today's chest, tomorrow's legs, the next day is back. The point is, you don't actually run to get faster. This kid's been running all his life. So he doesn't need to come to us to do more running for us to get him faster. It's not going to work. He's been running all his life. He needs to get stronger in the right muscle groups. We're going to talk about that. Posterior chain, these muscle groups, low back, glutes, hamstrings, calves, the exercises to use, um, and physics. You want to get stronger, weight training for sports is physics and mathematics. So if you want to get your kids faster, you've got to understand force production. Okay. Force production in the right muscle groups. Again, coming back to this. Okay. Uh, the other example was we had a 135 pound football player come in. I think he was uh, in 10th grade. Or uh, a little steam that just started with us. Ryan at 10th grade. 10th grade was 135 pounds. Coaches had him doing a ton of cone drills and ladder. Cone, 